Thank you so much, Michael. There's only one Michael, and there's only <laughs> one all of you. So I'm going to open it up to uh, everybody. Uh, if anybody has any questions, you're welcome to ask it now. Go ahead and unmute yourselves and ask Michael your question. Please also yeah. say your name so Michael knows your name if you communicate yeah, anything, with him later. Anything at all, guys. And it doesn't have to be art or music or whatever. And uh, happily, and please let me know what you're doing as well. Like, I would love to hear what you're doing. Hi, my name is Darren. I'm a filmmaker and a screenwriter. Um, hey, Darren. Michael, um, when you score a film, do you yep. find that, that the uh, directors know exactly what they want or they have no idea or <laughs> it's a great this... question uh yeah it, it's a little bit of both and i have to say um it's kind of a two-prong answer sometimes that there's they know so much what they want because they give you a temp score and we'll say it's all miles davis and they just love freaking miles davis and every freaking track sounds like miles davis and then they want fucking miles davis and you're like that's great i love miles davis too He's dead, and there was one of them. And there's a reason, and I'm like, you can buy Miles Davis if you've got, like, I don't know, probably 40 grand a track. Um, so you have to, it's like, do you want the mood of Miles Davis? And you're okay with that. And so sometimes you you, you kind of have to almost um, have a really deep discussion on what it is about the music that they really like. So those guys can be really tricky. And then other times they have no idea, and they're just plugging in favorite songs. And um, what I will say, like my multimedia background is really helped with. And even when you are, if you're going to go make a film, you can have no idea. You might just really love a mood, you know, and, and that's okay too. If you like, if you're, if for you, if it's, um, I don't know what you like for music, but if, it, if it's a, say a dramatic scene and there's a certain sound you like, um, I think the best thing for directors to do isn't so much to be like, it has to be this track and be like, you know what I really like about the sound of this track is that it kind of gives me this feeling of um, of like a, a prairie, a stoplight, someone sitting in a car alone and the rain starts. And that's what I, this song makes me feel like in this scene. And so I have had directors have no freaking clue whatsoever. Um, and it can be really challenging to start from zero, but sometimes it's more liberating because it's just like, okay, this is what I saw. Here's a bunch of sounds. And then they can kind of go in and they edit and pick what they like. Um, what's really helpful, I think, is to be able to go through a screenplay or, you know, if you, if you have, usually the best way to score is when you get directors at final cut, you know, and then, so there we can go, you can have, you can walk and talk your way through each scene. Now, Hans Zimmer will talk about it, and I'm not that big of a Hans Zimmer fan. Sometimes it's too bombastic for me, but most of the time when he starts with Christopher Nolan, he's like, I have no idea what the what I'm going to do for you. He's like, he's got a total loss. And again, that's back to this improv thing, and they would just talk her way through it. So I don't think there's a, a, a straight answer to it other than it does help if the director knows what they want it to feel like. That's the most important thing. It's all about feel and mood. If that feel and mood for you is like oh this is a sad song and it's metallica well that's that's your sad that's where we're going to start <laughs> we're going to start with heavy metal guitar that's what's sad to you fine what we'll start there and then we can work our way through it and as a composer it's my job to kind of go through my library and my brain to try to connect to wherever you're at so it, it's the most like i said the the most clear you can be with a composer is to talk mood if there's certain instruments you hear, like the cello might be everything for you. And it's a, there's a baby in the movie and you're like, that cello's the baby. And I'm like, okay, cool. That works. You know, or um, I only want piano and um, one violin and I want the sound and, and footsteps are in every piece. And so those are all great things to do. And I really think, you know, I think directors get a little too caught up sometimes, especially with film music, with what they've already seen. You know, they're like, oh, well, you know, in this film that I think my film's most like, they use this kind of, don't ever do that. That's, it's not that film. It doesn't. I, you know, all the time they'll be like, well, it's kind of like Taxi Driver uh, meets Lost in Translation. I'm like, I don't know what the fuck movie that is. Like, are you kidding me? Like, what do you got? Like, what is this film? They do it with bands all the time, too. They'll be like, you know, oh, it's Machine Gun Kelly meets Pink Floyd. I'm like, what? I don't know what the hell that is. Um, but it, but I get it. And, you know, it's hard for people who don't know music to talk about music. 
So I think it, as directors or filmmakers, if you can come to a musician and talk feeling, color, and any particular instrument sounds that you like, then then we're at least in the same ballpark. Now we can start kind of filtering into like, oh, okay, I, I now I know where we are and we can start. And, you know, it's always great to sit down with a director like at the piano and be like, how about these four notes? How about these? Three? But it's, you don't always have that time. So again, if you can give a composer or you're, like you say you're making a student film and you're like, oh, my buddy's a guitar player. Awesome, cool. So you got guitar and you'd be like, go over with them and be like, hey, this scene is sad. Give me two sad chords. Give me a happy chord. Give me an angry chord. And you can kind of go through each one inch by inch. And that's when it gets really creative and you're back to that play and improv. Let the story dictate, let, let whatever colors the composer can provide for you. And that composer might not be for you. They might not, they might not hit it. And you're like, okay, that person's not going to work. Um, because their job is to, to, you know, my job as a composer, as even, you know, I try to pick films that I know that the weirdo stuff that I do, I can at least bring in a little bit. Because um, I don't always get fulfilled if I'm like, oh, just play canned strings. I'm like, nah, it's not really what I want to do. Um, but the more you can play with your composer verbally, talk through a scene, read the script. Hell, you can even act it out with them. I, I've done that. I did that a little bit with Bill, like where he gave me the scripts and you know, I got to play a little of character. And I was like, oh, okay, now I'm kind of understanding the script. And, you know, Moon Garden that it's going to be coming out. I never saw one frame of that film until way later. I made 11 hour sound library off the script. And Ryan, the director, would just be like, hey, we need, uh, you know, don't forget to do some beautiful things. Don't forget to do metallic things. Don't forget to do static. And I would just go. And I, you know, when I, work I you tend to get obsessive and seven hours later I'd have 48 tracks of static and we'd be like okay that's gonna be when the kid walks or whatever and and then when I saw the film back we were still three or four pieces short where there was like oh now we needed li literally I had to sh you know look at the scene and score it um but yeah when it's a great question and I think as a director you've got to figure out how you want to talk to your composers too um you definitely got to go this is how i feel comfortable talking about music even if you don't know a damn thing about it you don't need to know anything but you listen to it you know and, and i'm going to guess as filmmakers you didn't you you probably got either into film and didn't even recognize the sound or you let you like the radio or whatever you were listening to just as much because you were making films in your head so um I don't think there's one tried and true way. I think every director is different, but it does help if you can remove feeling inadequate about talking about music if you're not a musician as a film director, because that gets in the way. Um, and so the more you can talk about, again, just to wrap that up, mood, color, and any particular instruments that you really are hearing, that really helps kind of narrow the, the playing field. And then you can work out once you got that. That makes sense? Yes. Yes, it does. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. Good. Uh, awesome. Now, I have to say goodbye because I got to go to work. So. Oh, man. All right. Well, great. Thank you for a great question and good luck at work tonight. Do you mind if I pop in and ask a question real quick? Terribly mind, but go for it. Hi, <laughs> I'm Michael. Kidding. Hello. <laughs> I'm Kaylee Wilbig. I'm a writer, producer, and director. I'm a student here at SAU, and I'm very happy to get to meet you. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, well, thank so, you for being here. Darren brought up like some really great questions. I just kind of wanted to like add on to that. Yeah. So what would you prefer to get from a director and producer? Like ideally, what do you want to get in order to get like the most creative process? Like, do you prefer okay. something more open or more refined? That's a great question. Um, on a personal preference or professional preference, I guess, um moon garden was the greatest experience in my life film wise because i like i said i didn't see a freaking lick of it um i just i met the director at a bar we sh we read through the script drank some whiskey took some notes circled things like because i how i score is i also do some sound design stuff in there too it's not just like hear strings and you know i'll, I'll bring in banging metal you know, metal and you know, the wind or whatever, and what, and I'll pitch bend it, but, and it was an amazing experience. However, what I will say is there was plenty of times I didn't know what the frick I was doing. 
because I was like, I don't know what the, I, a giant rhino with a baby inside is supposed to sound like. I don't know what he even wants for this, you know? So it's, um, it was a little hard. So I will say, I think ideally the best thing that is really great is you can't have your director or if you're the director, you can't be in love with your temp music. That is the most stifling death toll for any soundtrack that's ever been made. If you're going to give me a scene and you are obsessed with, you know, who do you like for music? Kelly, who do you like? Who, who are you listening? Give me, give me one person you like. And don't be embarrassed or afraid because I'm going to yell about pop culture. What do you like? Taylor Swift. I, I, okay, fine. The Taylor whitest Swift. answer I can give. <laughs> oh, it's fine. I mean, I, she, she's, she is trying to change her ways, which I give her huge props for. She started off as a little teeny barber and now she's trying to do something for real. So good for her. I really do respect that. Um, so it, say you had Taylor Swift in every freaking song, like every scene you want me to score. And you're like, I, yeah, this song just really nails it. And then I'm fucked. I'm never going to be Taylor Swift. No one's ever going to sound like Taylor Swift. It can be a great reference. if you, So what I would prefer is that if you're like, here's this scene. Right now that I have this song by Taylor Swift in there that I really like. And, and you have to know exactly why you like it. Not that you just like the song. Where is it? What beats it's hitting? Is, is it because when the girl walks out of the bar, the acoustic guitar starts? Is it that the drum suddenly as she leaves the, and the door slams and then the song starts like the way that it is it the feeling is it because you just like taylor swift and you want it to sound like a you know uh, a female singer with a guitar you know or whatever the case may be so if you're gonna show something to a composer with temp music in there you just you all number one have to be willing to let it go because otherwise you're just going to get a derivative of that thing that you want that you can't afford because if you really want a taylor swift you go buy it Right. Uh, and, and again, that's easily 40 grand for 10 seconds, 15 seconds. Right. And if you're like, it's not Taylor Swift that I like, I just like the 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 whimsy of the guitar and the, and the dark piano. then that's fine. But you have to, as a director, kind of have to come in with it going, what's this person going to bring to our story? Not here's what I did. And it's got to sound like this. That's when it gets stifling. So ideally, it's just come in with a very open mind. You can have loose temp music in there because a lot of times editors want to cut to something, right? Um, and I would also bring, you know, a really almost a poetic reason of why it's in there. If it's, if it again, color, mood, um, the sound, what instruments, right? Not so much that it's this person, it's that it, there's these things that I really like in here. And that really allows for a freedom. And, and also spend time with your composer, just walk, talking through the movie, right? It's not just about what's on the screen, right? I don't think when someone makes a really good film, it's not about what's on the screen that actually hits home. It's how it reflects back at you and inside of you and your experience of that film. And it doesn't work the first time you see it. Everyone only see people think it's weird when you watch movies 18 times. It's like, First time you see it, you just consume it. You don't get it. You're just you're just taking in plot. A good film is not just the plot, right? That's what X Men are for, and, and it's great. Don't you know? It's fun. Totally get it. But there's not some deep freaking thirty nine layers to it. It's yeah. There's a little more layers than like than just. But there's not a lot of subtext, right? So, and the role of music or sound inside of a film is way more important to me. And I also. You know, if you really listen to a lot of directors, how much more information we get from our ears than we do our eyes when watching a film. I mean, horror, we're in the month of horror. I mean, there's no there's no horror movie without sound, like without really great sound. Like when you watch Nosferatu, it's not that scary. It's awesome looking because, you know, it's on those old cameras and, you know, and the, the, the it's all it's theater, but there's no sound. You get this you usually get this campy kind of crazy weird piano and you're like, it's not really that scary. But if you scored that today it would be fucking terrifying. And that guy went and lived in a cave and like sawed down his teeth. Like that's some serious, like crazy method acting. Right. Um, and there were real rats and shit like that. So it's way more terrifying, but because it doesn't have the soundtrack of, you know, psycho or Halloween, it doesn't feel, it kind of feels campy to us because it's missing a certain element. So 
Yeah. So again, ideally be open to losing your temp music, but being able to describe what, why you put it in there, why you like it so much. Um, and be honest, if you really don't know, and you go, I mean, I don't know why I like this, but I'm a little lost and you see what you can come up with here. And it's always great to talk to your composer, like inch by inch by inch by inch. And also tr try to make sure you listen to what they do before you work with them. Like what else, they, if it's just a buddy that's gonna do something for you, great. But if you're really, you know, working on a big project and you want a certain kind of music, don't get the person that only plays acoustic guitar to do an electronic soundtrack or vice versa. Or you may want that and go, okay, you know what? You can't do anything that you've ever done before. You know, here's a tambourine and a whistle. That's what I want. And that could be fun too. But ideally, you know, the composer wants to feel free, but they don't want to feel completely lost and just throwing shit up against a wall. I mean, I went through it with Bill a bunch. There were times where I went through about 20 different versions of something and all he really wanted was Bob Dylan. So I would do the Bob Dylan thing and then we'd keep going and going and going and he thought he could buy Bob Dylan. And I was like, and then he couldn't afford the Bob Dylan. And I was like, I'm not Bob Dylan. I could, I can mimic it, but there's one, again, one. There's only one, it's only gonna happen once. So yeah, uh, does that, was that, does that answer your question? Yes, thank you so much. So what I'm getting from it is kind of definitely go off the vibes, like have some references and have like yeah. a clear idea of a general vision of what you want. Yeah. But listen to your composer, make sure you're doing like what they're good at, if that's what you're wanting, be open to new things. Um, and just like have the vibes and have like reference material to give them. That's what I'm getting. Yeah, and you know, a great way to do, thank you. yeah, a great way could, you know, especially if you're just getting to a, a film and you're like, we don't know what we're going to use for temp music yet, if, but you're playing as you're editing or just, you know, moving images around or even writing it and you're like, and you were listening to certain music and you're like, that, you can start there and be like, just give your composer the playlist and be like, this isn't really what I'm looking for, but this is what I was listening to when I wrote it. Maybe you'll get some ideas from there or you know, as I was editing it, I didn't edit, I didn't use this as temp music, but I was really obsessed. I had, you know, I was listening to Mozart piano music just because it was relaxing to me and, and be like, cool, I'll, I'll listen to that. And so you can kind of use that you're, you're using the same, um, like construction paper, you know, it's like everyone's pulling from the same sandbox at least. And then that again, once you have a foundation, you can shoot for the stars and then all, all bets are off because that's when the magic really happens. But, but you started from the same sandbox. So, and then the tree grows and then you're into the stars and so on and so forth. But, you know, at least you started from the same place and you're not trying to find each other. You're trying to almost forget, go, we came together. Now we can forget each other and become ourselves. Thank you so much. I really yeah. appreciate that. That's Absolutely. perfect. Exactly what I was looking for. I appreciate All it. Right. Awesome. Any other questions, guys? I've got one for you. Um, Sean, is it? Hi. Uh, yeah, Sean Hopa. Hi. Nice, nice to meet you. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing well, man. How are you? I'm all right. Um, so I am, I honestly, I, I kind of do a little bit of everything right now at SAU, but I am a, I'm a, a big fan of, of horror. And I'd say horror is probably the genre that got me into film as an art form, just because as, as I would watch, uh, I would watch dead meat videos and they would go in depth in the behind the scenes and everything and, and yeah. the makeup teams. And it, it was also cool to me because it was so creative. So I was curious for you as a, as a sound person, because it's so crucial to that genre in, in particular, what is your favorite uh, sound or music design in horror? Oh God, man, so many, but I will tell you this, the first film I remember ever watching, and I guess this dates me, but, we got one of the first v VCRs and they were freaking like, I don't know, man. They were like this big um, in New Hampshire. There wasn't anything else to do. But the first movie that I ever saw that I really remember was like the Jungle Book when I was really young and then Night of the Living Dead by George Romero. Um, if you haven't seen the original of that, it is so apropos of the whole Black Lives Matter and everything that we just went through. Um, such a radical crazy film in terms of what they did in that politically speaking um just how low budget it was how but the sound in that and the in the way that the zombies are um it's just 
it's terrifying. It's almost like it's something, you know, it's just like all over your skin. And there is a film and it's a terrible one, but I will tell you, and before I tell you my favorite, these are things that stuck with me. And I, you know, you forget these things until you suddenly have to make something. But there's a film called Slither. And it's about these worms that get like a lightning strike happens. And, uh, it, and yeah, these worms become, I don't know how to even describe these worms, but they're little hook worms and they end up getting your skin and there there were scenes of like them falling out of your eyes and it was just all the little kind of thing. And it still gives me like ugh, all day. But in terms of my favorite kind of sound design for, for real horror movies, um, yeah, I, you can't go wrong with Jaws, obviously. All right. You know, just that, that, that sound and that design psycho is incredible. Um, my all-time favorite horror movie score is from Rosemary's Baby. All right, the, just the la 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 ting ting. It, I love when things go kind of ritualistic, and then fairy tale, and then it's like fairy tale and the devil, and then basically now we're into death. And I don't know why we find those things scary. I find them beautiful, but I really do love that. Uh, just absolutely and then you know one of my favorite directors is david lynch all of his soundtracks all of his sound design and they're not really horror movies but they're dark they're wild they're creepy they're overly sexualized and all of those scores and sound designs are just unbelievably stunning and so i love that um if i go like true horror the first Friday the 13th, believe it or not, scared the living crap out of me. And there was the, the thing that I really want to illustrate about that isn't just the sound, because it was kind of cheesy. It was 80s. It was one of the first synth ones, just like Halloween, because that's one of my all-time favorite soundtracks, too. It was just the director playing some chords on a synthesizer. And um, is silence. They knew when to turn it off. And when it comes to horror, silence is as important as any sound that's ever been made um but it you know it's just something to really pay attention to inside a film period you know or music um a lot of times when we're making something we think we have to constantly be making something and sometimes just shutting our mouths is the greatest creative choice you can make and silence is a huge thing and you know we're all so desperate to be heard right now and there's a lot of times where i'm like why aren't we so desperate to be quiet like we want quiet, man. So, but I will say the in the last track on that Friday the Thirteenth original soundtrack, when Jason comes out of the water, I'm assuming you've all seen it, and I'm not ruining anything, um, is beautiful. So go back and listen to that final track, of of that. Um, and then you know you've got, of course, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, you know, and the the, the that chainsaw sounds one of the most terrifying sounds of all time, and and you can't go without you know B movie screams. Um, and another really great use of silence is if you haven't seen it, and most people haven't, it's a brilliant early horror movie from the 40s called um, called The Cat People. And it's fucking brilliant the way they use silence in that movie. All right. And it's I know The Cat People. I do love cats and all that. So I, I won't lie. That is the reason I saw it. I never heard of it. And someone gave it to me. And I was like, I'll watch The Cat People. Um, but they never show the monster. They never show the evil. They, it's just. And they used an amazing amount of silence in that movie to, to like kind of bring home what a cat would do, right? Because cats don't make a lot of noise in, in, unless they're really agitated. My cat talks a lot, but I, I asked for that. So um, I'm trying to think what other more modern horror scores that I really love. Oh, the Mandy soundtrack is incredible by Johan Johansson. Um, if you didn't see uh, Color Outside of Space, um, which is uh, Colin Stetson. He did also the score for Hereditary. And that's an amazing, he's a saxophone player. And a lot of that, is, all the sounds in that were made from a saxophone and like seven loop, loop pedals. Like you'll be like, that's a cello. No, it's it's him playing saxophone. And the director of that um, wouldn't even sign the contract with A24 unless he was able to get, the first call was to Colin Stetson, the composer. He said, I'm not doing it if I can't have you. And he said, how much is it going to take to have you for a year? 
of your life. And he was a touring musician. You know, he, the only way he made money was to tour and to like put out records. He's like, I need you for a year. How much money is it going to take? And then he said, and he went back to the studio and said, this is how much money it's going to take for me to have this composer. So, um, but Hereditary is beautiful. Um, the first Quiet Place was really great. Um, second soundtrack, I think sucks. And I don't like the second movie, again, but I rarely like sequels to anything, unfortunately. And it's not bad. It's just now they've got a budget and a gun to their head if they don't make the money. Whereas the first one they made usually out of pocket, their friends put money in and it was their baby. They were playing, they weren't making product. They were playing and, and this is what it turned into. And if you're lucky enough, you can sell it and it'll come out in the world. But the second one, gun to your head, here's $20 million, we better get it back. And now we're gonna make the exact same movie. And so anyway, but those two soundtracks are really fantastic. Um, Again, not a horror movie, but they use a lot of dark sound as anything that Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross do. They do a lot of stuff for David Fincher, who did, you know, Seven's one of my favorite movies of all time. Um, and But anything those two guys do, just type, they even did the Vietnam soundtrack with Ken Burns, which I thought was weird and it wouldn't work because it's so out of time. And it works amazing. If you haven't seen that documentary, it's, it's on PBS or Netflix or whatever. Um, and if you don't know what Vietnam, some of you might have had family members in it, but that changed our country forever and how they used really modern industrial dark music inside of something that was really the 60s and 70s was amazing how they blended that. But those two modern horror movies and the other soundtrack I really dug was for Midsommar. All right, my friend Bobby did that and that movie blew up and he had never scored anything before that movie put him on the map. All right. So, uh, but that score is pretty good. I didn't love the movie. I loved elements of it. I thought it was beautifully shot. And then, and it was, I love anything culty is always weird to me anyway. And so if you didn't see that, it's worth checking out, but it's really well shot. And, but they, again, they use a lot of great silence, but those, uh, that score is fantastic. But again, if I go, if I had to pick one from all time, it's got to be Rosemary's Baby. Hope that answered your question, John. You... Yeah, it was. Thank, <laughs> thank you so much. Personally, I'm a big Shining fan. Those first couple of yeah. notes when you see the oh. Overlook, fantastic. But thank yeah, you well, so much for your question or answer. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I, I would never not put the Shining on a list. Um, it just sometimes I feel like it's an obvious one, just like Psycho. Uh, those two are kind of like, and you know, and even Halloween. Like I'm like, that's eh, just so obvious. But yeah, Shining's freak. Those chords are amazing. So yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for your time. It was great meeting you. You too. Anything else, guys? We've got a bunch of cards. I'm guessing. I think we have a, a restroom break. That's what I think is going on right now. <laughs> well, I think that's all, that's all the questions. Thank you so much. Um, it was amazing being with you. Um, hearing all of this, I'm sure everyone can agree um and we'd love to have you at siu if you can come um i think we'd love to would... oh there's a, there is a question was there somebody else nick did you have a question you're okay yeah i'm good i'm good thank okay. you for for speaking with us um oh absolutely man and yeah. my pleasure and uh yeah i really you know maybe maybe next time i can see what some of you guys do and uh you know even little clips or, or samples or you know i would love to see any of it it uh well, you know, I was a, a professor for the last, like, well, I don't know, 12, 13 years as well. And uh, I, it's my first year away from teaching. So it's nice to talk to you guys. And because uh, I do love, you know, I love, I love learning. I love teaching because I get so much, I learn so much as well. And, you know, especially as we get older and the student age kind of stays the same with the exception of a few here and there, it's just great to hear where you guys are coming from. Because I don't want to lose touch with that either. Like, I don't want to just turn into a, you know, I'm already a ranting man, I don't want to turn into a ranting old man. So <laughs> it's great to hear where you guys are coming from. Well, I think it'd be great to have you come down. And I have some ideas of what we could do in a week, maybe with having the the old Hollywood team uh, coming through in the same week too. And maybe That'd we could awesome. all create something. I think it'd be really fun. You know? Yeah, I'm down. I'm definitely down. So. All right. Well, thank you all so much. And uh, well, I'll I sign you out with a little, a little Friday the 13th. I'll see you all next time. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, all of you.
Bye, guys. Thanks. Have a great night.